Welcome back to the True Sports Physical Therapy Podcast. The pod you're about to hear is our first crack at a solo podcast. So it's a whole bunch of me. I love interviewing people. I love learning from people. I loved preparing for this pod. Honestly, it was tough for me to just run my mouth for uh, however long, 35 minutes or so. I I think there's a lot of good in here. We really dive into the questions that you should ask in an interview, all all questions that should be asked. And I broke it down into questions that I love hearing from applicants, but also questions that I would recommend all applicants to ask someone who's interviewing. And I go into exactly why. So if you're looking at other gigs, by the way, even when you're interacting with patients, there's a constant somewhat of an interview process always going on. There's great fodder here to to really enhance all of those interactions. I really hope you enjoy it. As always, let me know if you did. Let me know if you didn't. Reach me at True Sports PT on Instagram is the easiest way. Just shoot me a DM. Love hearing from you, and I'll get right back to you. Without further ado, here's me talking, and just me talking about questions to ask in an interview as a sports PT. Enjoy. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the True Sports Physical Therapy Podcast. This is Yoni Rosenblatt. This one is going to be very unique. We're going to do really just a solo podcast. It's just me talking. And what I wanted to do was go through uh, an awesome topic that was sent in by by a bunch of our listeners, really. You can always reach us at True Sports PT on Instagram. That is the best way to ask us any questions that are on your mind. One of the things I always do is ask, what do you guys want to hear? What do you want to know? What do you want to learn about the sports physical therapy world? I got some awesome podcast ideas from all of that chatter that kind of came our way. Uh, One of these, an example of what you guys wanted to hear was specifically about the interview process. We've talked about how you get some really awesome jobs and opportunities in the sports PT world. And then we had Dr. Tim Mahan on who, who really highlighted some of his awesome experiences and how he ended up where he ended up. One of the things that keeps coming up uh, in our DMs is what do you ask on these interviews? What do you ask as the applicant on these interviews? And I thought that was an interesting topic to really delve into and, and something that I can really speak to because I'm still interviewing for positions all the time. Um, whether it be in my role with Israel lacrosse or Israel baseball or talking to per- professional organizations in the NFL and the MLB. Um, I'm getting asked some of these questions, but also I do a ton of interviewing as an employer. Um, and I really wanted to dive into that and break down questions that applicants can ask me or should be asking. And then I broke it down even further into, hey, these are questions that me as the employer, as the interviewer, I love hearing. I love hearing these questions. And then the second part is going to be you who are applying to a sports PT role. What are the questions you have to ask that you really um, need to get the answer to and what you can learn from some of those things? So without further ado, let's dive straight into to some of those questions that should come up during an interview process. And again, these are, these are going to be questions that I love hearing people ask me when, when I'm interviewing people. So this top question is, I love hearing the question from applicants. What are opportunities for career advancements at true sports physical therapy? So my private practice is called true sports physical therapy. Uh, we're a sports PT practice. We started in 2014, uh, with one clinic and and now we're up to 13 clinics throughout Maryland and now we're in PA. And so when an applicant asks me, what are opportunities for career advancements at true sports? I, I get excited to answer that. And, and that's because what it's showing me is that the applicant has an outstanding growth mindset that you're interested the applicant in so much more than just money. When you talk about career advancement, you're, you're thinking, how am I going to become a better PT? How am I going to serve the patients and the athletes that are in front of me even better? Um, and then how do I stay with true sports and kind of grow? So as the interviewer, I love hearing that because it shows that growth mindset. It shows that maybe this person's considering leadership. Maybe they're considering further education. Maybe they're considering mentorship both for them and then maybe eventually to supply mentorship 
to to other sports PTs that that work with us. I think it's a it's a great question that I love fielding because um, it gives me so much insight into the applicant. It also speaks to the fact that this applicant really has the long game uh, front front of mind, front and center as he applies for for this opportunity. Too often we see in this, especially in this job market, we see PTs just hopping from company to company, clinic to clinic, just looking for small pay bumps or looking for something to pad their resumes. I've had applicants tell me, um, you know, I want such and such title on my business card or so that I can use it on my LinkedIn profile so that it sets me up for success in the future. As soon as I hear that, that's kind of ringing bells like, hey, this applicant's already looking for the next gig or the next job. When you start talking about career advancement within the company, now I'm thinking, okay, this applicant is someone I want to invest in as an employer because they're going to make the investment in the company to be long, to be with us long term. Um, and, and it's unfortunately, it's uh, they're few and far between. But this is a great question to ask. It, it talks about how it really speaks to the fact that the applicant is not a clock puncher. They're not just coming in nine to five and, hey, I'm going to leave and not think about my patients, not think about the company for until I walk back in. When people ask about career advancement, they're really telling me, the employer, I'm interested in staying. I want to grow and I want to grow here. So I love that. So if you're applying, make sure you ask that question. If you're interviewing, listen. Listen for those questions. They're going to tell you a ton as to who the applicant is. Another thing that really popped my mind when, when I was approached with doing a whole pod on questions during the interview process um, was when I hear the question from an applicant, what makes a candidate the ideal PT to work in your company? That shows me that the applicant is interested in the goals of the company, in the structure of the company. It's not just about them rather they're seeing hey is there a fit here is what i'm really good at is what i value as the applicant does that mesh does that coalesce perfectly with what it is the hiring company or maybe even the hiring manager looks for it, it allows for the applicant to give examples of here's maybe where i fit here's an example in my past maybe in my graduate studies or maybe in my other positions where I can show that I am one of these ideal PTs. My answer to these questions is to who is the ideal candidate to work at true sports in this example is someone who just absolutely loves the profession of physical therapy and someone who loves working with athletes and helping them achieve their goals. So when they ask me what the ideal candidate is, it means they're interested in getting better at what they do and, and making sure that they're putting their best foot forward. So I would say that's question number two, a question that I just absolutely love hearing from candidates when I open up the interview process for any questions. A another one to, to really look at is listening for that applicant to say, you know, it looks like your company emphasizes blank. How does this show up in your daily practice? That question's awesome. I hate when I have applicants who know nothing about our company, about our practice, even about the specific position they're interviewing for. Location, sporting around it, athletes and teams and programs that are, that are around that given location. I want, I want that applicant to show me that they've done some research on us as a company, maybe even on me as in as a potential employer to to really ask and to try to understand what what's the mission of true sports what's the mission of the company i want to know that that you've looked into this it hints it hints that the applicant really already shares some of the ideals and the values of the company they're applying to and interviewing for and if that's the case they already know there's somewhat of a of a fit it tells me that They've done their due diligence. They've done their homework. This is someone who's going to go above and beyond and is dying to be in a company like ours. It's a great thing to ask. So, so again, on both sides, I, I love hearing it from candidates. 
um, and the candidate should make sure that they ask it. And by the way, make sure that you ask it like that, saying, hey, I've done some research here. Here's what I know about true sports. Is this true? Is this not true? And show me how that shows up um, in your given work day. And then another question that, that jumps out at me is, um, what's your continuing ed allowance? I, I do get this question a lot. Too often, unfortunately, it's like secondary or it's last. Uh, it goes along with, what are your benefits? Uh, what's the salary of this position? Things like that. I love when an applicant leads with, uh, what's your continuing ed allowance? It shows me that this applicant is dead set on becoming a better physical therapist. Hey, like none of us know everything. It's awesome that our governing body, the APTA, requires ongoing continuing education. I wish they did a better job of requiring specific lines of education. I think there's a lot of fluff out there in the con ed world. But if an applicant's leading with what's your continuing ed allowance, it just tells me there's so much more that they're interested in gaining from the company than just money or time off. They just want to become better PTs. And to me, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone with a growth mindset as an employee, as a coworker, I'm looking at someone who's going to bring things to the table and teach me very often. I'll ask in an interview, what are you going to teach me? That question didn't used to hold as much gravity because I wasn't much older than, or have much more experience than the people that I was interviewing. Now at this point, yeah, I've been in, I've been in the game. Uh, I think 14 years, 15 years as a PT, even if you're a new graduate, you're going to teach me something. I have a higher likelihood of believing that you're going to teach me something if you're asking me about continuing it. That's why I love hearing that because it, it means that you're always looking to add and, and bring to the table. Um, so, so those are really questions I, as an employer and interviewer, love hearing from potential candidates. Th there's also a whole other side to this, which is, if I'm counseling you, the applicant, on what you need to ask, I, I, think the, I think the following questions are uber important and essential. Not just that you ask them, listen to the answers. There is so much garbage, pretending, um, falsehoods within the world of sports physical therapy. I, I took a job very early on because they told me, yeah, we are a sports clinic and we're going to pay you X. And I got really excited about getting a higher salary. And hey, they said they were sports. If I just would have dug a little bit deeper, I would have realized this is not a sports clinic. And, and by the way, anyone can say that they're a sports clinic. Uh, one of my missions eventually, I'm sure I've mentioned it here on the pod before, but is we should be really putting some meaning and even some internal professional legalities around using the word sports. If you say you treat sports, it should be you have to upkeep this amount or this percent caseload are competitive athletes. This amount of your caseload are would self-describe or self-define themselves as athletes. Your facility needs to have X, and usually it's really just space. But don't tell me you work in sports, that you do sports rehab, and you work in a standard office setting. It, it's just you shouldn't be allowed to bill yourself as a sports physical therapist or practice. So all of that to say is the question that I love getting, hearing, and that I really recommend that you ask is, what percentage of your clientele would call themselves athletes? How many of them would self-identify as athletes? So not all the clinics are able to treat NFL athletes or MLB players, but employers should be able to rave about the percentage of their caseload. If you asked me, if you're applying for a job at True Sports Physical Therapy, and you asked me, what percentage of your clientele, of your patients, would call themselves athletes? I would say 90%. 90% define themselves as athletes. Now, what percent is our competitive athletes? What percent are professional athletes? What percent are going to college to play sport or they're in high school and they currently play sport competitively? It's really high. It, like that number is really high. But you better believe that 90% of the people that walk in my door say, 
I'm an athlete, and they're excited. They're choosing True Sports because it, not only does it have sports in the name, you walk in the facility, and the facility feels like performance enhancement facility. You walk in the facility, and you see other athletes in there. And that's why I encourage you, if you're applying for a job, go check that clinic out. A part of our standard procedure, I will not hire anyone that doesn't come inside of our clinics, that doesn't come in and treat and spend a day. And don't just come in, do an interview, look around and leave. Can you spend a day there? Is it true? Is what they're telling you true? And that's why I say, this question is imperative. What percentage of your clientele would self-identify as athletes? Listen to the answer, but also go see it. See it for yourself. Are they really treating athletes? What level of athletes, et cetera? Um, and, and then, you know, drill down just, just like we do on a podcast, just like we do in an interview setting where we'll ask a question and then we listen to the answer. You got to listen to the answer and then respond, create a dialogue around it. I strongly encourage that specifically with this example of what percentage of your caseload are actually athletes. Another question that you have to ask your potential future employers, how much time is allocated to one-to-one -to -one care? How often are you scheduling a patient? And then listen to that answer and listen closely. Do you hear words like techs, like high school students, like volunteers, like PTAs, like really listen as to who's on that staff and when the handoff of the patient takes place if there is indeed a handoff. It is very difficult and challenging in this climate to run a proper sports physical therapy practice and provide one-on-one -on -one care, especially if you're gonna stay in network with insurance. Time and again, I have seen practices start one way and then be forced to merge into some model that, that doesn't reek of sports, that doesn't put the patient first, that doesn't allocate enough time towards the patient. In my own personal experience, I, I worked in a number of those clinics before uh, we came up with a model of true sports where we treat one-on-one -on -one for 45 minutes every damn time. And... We started with that 45 minute in the past. And then whether it be outside investors come on, whether it be the overhead keeps escalating, whether it be reimbursements decrease, or you're just trying to scale, all of a sudden those patient appointments dwindle down to maybe one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes and you're writing a lot of things on a whiteboard. But if you're applying for, for a position, you're gonna see that if you go in shadow, or even if like you listen to the answer and you hear things like tech or you keep asking. So what, is it, what does that mean you treat one-on-one? -on -one? I know you say one-on-one, -on -one, but what's a, what's a usual session look like? How much time is spent hands-on? How much time is spent um, exercising, therapeutic exercise? And how much time is spent watching, coaching, teaching the exercise side? It is, it's not enough. Uh, this is my opinion. It's not enough to just put your hands on an athlete and then hand them off or give them their exercises or even teach them their exercises once. There's so much outstanding nuance and room for gain and in increasing those patient outcomes. If your scheduling allows you to be one-on-one, -on -one, truly one-on-one -on -one with that athlete, watching them, coaching them, loading them appropriately, progressing, scaling, it has to be evident and obvious when you walk into that clinic or even when you're talking with the interviewer so uh, it's essential so drill them on that and, and just make sure that it becomes a focus point if you're interested in being an outstanding sports PT by the way no knock if you want to use this profession to earn as much money as possible oftentimes that is not going to happen if you're really focused on that one-on-one -on -one care 45 minutes an hour maybe even more certainly while you're in network as an in-network provider um there, there's plenty of money to be made and you'll, you'll see plenty of gurus preaching that to go to that cash model i think it's just very hard to treat a number of athletes to do post-op care um, god knows i love a good acl we have our acl course coming out really soon as to how we treat acls how do you rehab an acl when you're just taking cash listen it's possible but it's 
really hard to get five, six, seven ACLs on your schedule in a day that someone's going to be paying cash on the barrel, as my dad would say, every single session. So drill it down, make sure, make sure it's a focus. Another question that you absolutely have to ask, and I would love to hear this, and I definitely do hear this from, from some applicants, is what is an aspect of the company that has been improved upon or added in the last few years? Why is that an important question? It's an important question because this is going to show the growth mindset of the company. This is going to show, hey, am I joining a team that is obsessed with providing the best or understands that we don't know any everything and is willing to take a leap to try something, to continuing to add and better our services? I, I know that um, even by and large, our, our comp structure has continued to evolve at True Sports to try to provide therapists with the flexibility of their scheduling, with the flexibility of, hey, I want to earn a little bit more this week. Um, maybe I, I don't need to take on the extra patients or hours, et cetera, another week. Or holidays are coming up. All I got to do is set up my schedule as such so that I can make a little extra bread and you know spread it around around the holidays. But ask those questions of what has the company instituted um, Myself, as a, as a business owner and a practice manager, I, I look at this and say, we're, we're not going to get everything right the first time, and we're going to continue tinkering as a company to try to meet our goals and, and reach our mission of providing awesome care and creating an awesome environment to both patient as well as to PT. And so there are always ways, whether it be giving – therapists uh new career ladders to climb whether giving them new avenues to earn or more flexibility with their schedule so that they can own it they can make it the way they want it to be if you're not tinkering you're not improving you get stale and you're not providing the best that's why i implore you to ask that question what has the company done to improve over the last few years you're all it's also going to let you gauge the humility of the employer that you're looking at joining hopefully hopefully for a long time and you're going to be giving so many hours and so much effort to this company or brand you want to know are they approaching you with humility can they say hey i made a mistake before uh we're trying to get better our offerings are always getting better that question's really going to get to the heart of that Another question that I love seeing but but also is imperative from the applicant standpoint is asking the interviewer what advice they would give should you be offered the job. So from that question, you're going to hear a wide range of answers. And it, and it really depends who you're talking to. You have to understand who's doing the interview and in what process you are or what point in the process you are. But that's going to show you and give you a feel for the company values. If someone asked me what advice I would give them upon getting an offer or joining the true sports team, my advice would be prioritize preparation. Come in ready to roll with a very healthy dose of flexibility. So come up with an awesome plan for that giving session, for that given session, and just be flexible enough to know it ain't gonna go perfectly, and if, just because it's not going perfectly doesn't mean that that patient's not gonna walk out feeling better than when they walked in. That's my advice to them. Now, from that answer, hopefully you understand that the patient comes first. That, that's what the whole company is about. That's what your, your employer should be about, that that patient should come first and is tantamount with a close second being, how do I meet that therapist where they are? And how do I set them up for success? And if you can come up with questions, you know, in the same vein, like this isn't a be all end all list of questions, but if you can come up with those questions that make the employer think but also allows them to like peel back the curtain show you what's back there tell you what it's really like to work there what's it like to prepare for a session what are the things that they offer that make it an awesome work environment i think you've done your job as an applicant 
I love seeing that. And I know when I go to interview for other positions, those are always questions that I, I want to come back to. Another question that I would strongly recommend you ask the, the person app, um, interviewing you would be, what is the most challenging part of your role with your company? And so what that does is you're, you're going to be able to see what it is that the potential employer highlights and really requires from their employees. So if you ask that of the person doing your interview and they dive right into, they're just always, always on me about notes or they're just, all they do is talk about productivity. They don't talk about quality of session. They don't talk about education. If you start hearing that, it starts to raise some red flags. If you start, if you hear my superiors constantly are on me to take another course. They are constantly on me to provide an outstanding session. They are always talking about growth, not, not from a number standpoint, but from a clinical standpoint, that's stuff you, you love hearing. So again, awesome way to parse out who is this company or employer that I'm potentially joining? Is it, is it best for me? Is this, is this the best setup for me? Uh, finally, last but not least, a, a question that I think is so important when you go to apply for a job is, is there any type of rehab that your facility does not accommodate? It's going to give you a great feel for this is a company that invests in the facility to provide the best. This is a company that gives me the opportunity to put my best foot forward and to allow the patient to have the very best outcome. If they start talking about, well, has just about everything in the facility, but we got to go outside to run or, you know, ceilings are really low, so we can't really do box jumps. Well, now you're starting as, as a PT, you're starting to ask me to rehab a patient with my hands tied behind my back. I'm not saying you need the latest and greatest tech. You don't need a Proteus in the corner and a pair of vault force plates uh, and a whole bunch of GPS tracking. Those things are awesome. Knowing when to use them are awesome. They help get outstanding outcomes. I don't need to hear that. What I do need to hear is that there is a place, a facility where my athlete can run and jump and throw because I know that that's what my patient population is going to want. By the way, that's another key on, is this really a sports focused facility or, or practice? Um, it, I feel the same way in terms of timing, right? So it's facility and it's time. If you give me the facility and you give me the time with the patient, now we're setting our employees, our coworkers up for success. If you're missing one of those and you've got to tease it out as the applicant, uh, it's going to be a lot harder to reach your potential as a PT. I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, I've done ton, uh, my, my first practice was in a 200 year old Greek Orthodox church. So Polish, Polish Orthodox church. So I, I didn't have bells and whistles, but I had room to run. I had room to jump and I had one-on-one -on -one care for 45 minutes. Tease that out of the interview process. Is that going to be granted to you? I, I think that's a, I don't, it's non-negotiable. You need those two things to have the very best sports PT sitting in front of you. Now, I wanted to wrap this pod up and this conversation up with th number one, like the biggest piece is um, that kept coming up when, we were, when I was talking about um, interviews and interview process was money. When do we talk about money? When do we ask about money? What's a good time to do this? What's a, what's a bad time to do this? My answer to that is most importantly is it's about the way you position the question. So I love hearing what is the range of salary for this position in which I'm interviewing? Are there opportunities to enhance my compensation, whether it be just by uh, stay around longer and maybe, maybe I get um, an increase in salary, cost of living increase, or are there ways I can treat more patients? Are there ways I can bring more value to the company and therefore expect an increase in comp? 
like continuing education, putting together courses, like workshops, like adding another skill set. Um, maybe maybe you're going to bring in TPI screens. Maybe you're going to bring in a different set of athlete. And are there ways to increase my comp? I love those questions. I think that's the way the question should be posed. Please do not lead with that. I got a text from an applicant the other day saying, I'm interested in joining True Sports, um, but I need to know exactly what you're going to be paying uh, this position. You're right. You do need to know what True Sports will be paying for a given position. I don't want to hire someone where that is question number one. Because that, that tells me the focus is not where it needs to be. It's a reality. We have to talk about comp. I don't want it to be the first. Because the truth is, comp can be negotiated. Like I said, there are a million ways to increase how you earn, how much you earn. There are not a million ways to make sure that you are a cultural fit. And so let's clear that barrier before we start talking about something that, that can be finessed. Uh, or has many approaches. So that's, I, I thought that's like a, a massive focus is when do we talk about money? How do we talk about money? I think those are outstanding ways to talk about money. I would say, do not say or do the following during an interview process for a sports PT position. Do not say, I have been offered X by your competitor. Are you willing to match that? wrong foot to start out on, right? It, it doesn't matter to me, really, what you've been offered. What does matter to me is, what are you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to the table to the position? How are you gonna help the patients in front of you? That's obviously gonna help the company, et cetera. Let's talk about that. Don't start uh, with other offers you've gotten or comparisons before we've really gotten rolling. I hate the I need to make X. I've heard it during interviews, I've heard it addressed far better with in order to fulfill the role and give what you're what I think you're asking for to the company I would expect to make fill in the blank versus I need to make we have done awesome with with hiring a great team of sports PTs that expect to be well compensated that know their value know their worth know they're great at sports PT and know that they want to continue to work to be better at sports PT. I love that. What I don't love is hearing, you owe me already. And so just be really leery and careful and calculated about the way you start talking about money. I think it makes all the difference in the world. Um, and, and really, last but not least, the, the thing that I would really encourage you to avoid or when I say do not do the following is my current employer gives me this amount of PTO. Uh, again, it's, it's the same as money. It's really just laying out your needs. Um, and I think it's far better suited for a conversation. Once you realize there's a cultural fit, once you realize that your mission goals and values are aligned, then we can start talking about how do we make this other stuff work? How do, how do we make it jive so that Everyone can be happy and feel like they're, they're really getting the value they want. So, so much that, that uh, I think we covered today, which, which really highlight the questions that are so imperative during this conversation. I think when you have these conversations, what, what I always try to do and what I love to do during the interview process is just have a conversation. How well can you connect with the applicant and vice versa as the applicant? How well do you connect with Whoever's in the interviewer, maybe it's a clinic director, maybe it's the lead clinical PT, maybe it's the CEO, maybe it's a COO, know something about who's interviewing you, know a ton about the company, and show that you're going to be able to relate, communicate, really dive into any type of topics with any type of person, and let that interview be an example of that. I am thrilled to hire a PT that maybe wants, maybe wants uh, more compensation, more money. But someone who I just loved talking to, I loved being around, I, I loved their growth and their hunger for growth. Th that's a no brainer. If you can get that across in the interview, that's a win. Um, and, and I would say if you are interviewing, it's really the exact same thing. You want that applicant 
to feel at home, to know that they're not constantly going to be judged, but rather helped. I, I think once you come in, Tim Stone, who's our COO at True Sports, always talks about when you go through the interview process and then when you come out of the, that interview process and you put the blue jersey on, the True Sports jersey on, whatever company you're in, whatever colors they are, once that happens, we as the employer are there to support, are there to help, are there to to really help you achieve your goals as a PT, as long as those goals of a PT include wanting for and growing into to create outstanding outcomes for that patient, for that athlete. That's what we're about. And it's I challenge those who are doing the interviewing to to allow that to come across, to show that to the people that you're interviewing. That that's our focus. I mean, you know, why the hell did we get into this profession anyway? Everyone could have made a lot more money doing something else. We love this field. We love the human body and the way it moves and the levels to which it can accomplish. Let that come across. And that's what I want to hear people applying to jobs. And that's what I would encourage those who are interviewing. Let that resonate and let, let that seep out of your pores. It creates an environment that people just simply want to be a part of. Listen, this was unique so far uh, in our pod life at True Sports in that um, it was just a, a single pod um, and it, it came at request. So as always, we're looking to grow. We're looking to get better. So tell us what you thought. Um, tell us if you like this better than our interview style. Uh, do you like a mix and mash of both? Uh, no ego here. Tell me if you hated it. Uh, I'm happy to hear it if you loved it, but but be specific so we can continue to craft an awesome offering for you guys, the audience. That's what this is about. It's about getting sports PTs better at being sports PTs. And that's clinical. It's also professional. Uh, and it's also interpersonal. And so hopefully we accomplish that today with this conversation hopefully you now know some awesome questions that i love hearing and that i would recommend um you asking the person interviewing you asks you for questions that is the time to shine not nah i'm good use it as an opportunity to display your skill to display your acumen to display your affability and the sky's the limit don't hesitate to leave us a review uh wherever Wherever you listen to your podcast, don't hesitate to reach out at True Sports PT via Instagram is the easiest way to reach us. We're always hiring. Like if you want to go through this process with us, uh, with me, reach out, send us your resume, send us your cover letter. Tell us you just want to be an awesome sports PT and you want to treat elite level athletes. And I want to talk to you. Uh, I look forward to hearing from everyone. Thanks for listening, y'all.